Kevin Rabichow has more than $2.5 million in live tournament earnings and millions more in cash game profits from years of playing high stakes online. Rabichow is also a coach at Run and Once Poker Training, which is set to release his new course, The Game Plan, in September. Card Player TV caught up with the 32 year old poker pro during his run to the semifinals of the 2022 WSOP 25K Buy In Heads Up No Limit Hold event to discuss the hand that saw him eliminate 10 time bracelet winner Phil Ivey in the round of 16. At the time, the pair were playing 2,000, 4,000 betting limits with Rabbit Chow in the lead and Ivy on the button. So he opens to 10K and you three bet out of the big blind with King Jack suited. Yep. The first thing I wanted to ask about is what's your thought process there? Is that like in heads up? Is that just a value bet? Like you're going to be, can you just yeah. talk through a little bit about what that's all about? Yeah, totally. So if you just think about like, you, you mostly want to three bet with the best hands that you're going to have on average, uh, but Phil's opening almost every hand on the button in the first place. So. It's not like I'm up against 30 or 40 percent of hands. I'm up against like 80 or 90. So King Jack suit is just an excellent hand. It's a it's a value raise. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So he called that three bet and he flopped middle pair and the second nut flush draw out of position. Uh, you decided to check. He checked behind. Yeah. As the first act, you know, are you checking with the intention of check raising at some frequency or what is your thought process at this point? In yeah. So I do like in in heads up. Uh, I do a lot more checking out of position than I might in other formats. Um, I'm just like not that far ahead of his range in this situation. So my hand's just pretty strong as a check call. Uh, it's probably going to be a check call against whatever play he makes. Um, I'm just trying to keep in a lot of his worst hands and, and not overplay my hand until I make a flush or something like that. I feel like people used to maybe a few years ago or a little bit more before that would check raise maybe a little too often with we, like a sure. flush draw. Just been like, oh, I'm probably ahead in one direction. Sure, yeah. Would you say that that's a thing that's happened less as people have gone through the solver error? Or I think so, yeah, for sure. Like now there, there's just a lot more polarization in, in the way we bet or we raise. Um, if I'm check raising there, I want a really good hand or a really weak hand and King Jack of Clubs just kind of falls in the middle. Like if I get it in against a queen, it's not a disaster, but it's not my preferred play. I'd rather he just has trash and I and I keep those hands in. So check through and then you turn eight of clubs, second up flush. Yep. Uh, now you opt to just lead out 27K into 72K, if I have that correct. Yeah. Um, can you talk a little bit about the, the size and considerations there? Yeah, so once he checks back, I think he's mostly pretty weak. Um, I'm sort of in a situation where a lot of my hands want to get thin value. Obviously my hand's excellent, so I don't need to bet small. Uh, but my thought was more about zooming out considering what my whole range would want to do. I think I have a lot of like second pairs or, or weak top pairs or hands like that that just want a bit small um, and keep him around with something quite weak, something like uh, pocket fives or, or anything with a club. So a lot of people you see uh, the, the larger size and people crank up to almost full pot or something like that on the turn more often now than they used to. Yeah. Would that be reserved more for the very polarized, the your yeah. bluffs and your super nuts? Although yeah, for sure. Were kind of it's it's true, yeah. So it, I guess the main difference here is that we're not yet at the river, so I'm, I'm still trying to consider like the, the wide variety of hands I could have. Um, but I, I would take that approach once I get to the river, for sure. Okay, so yeah. river brought the nine of spades, so it's a four liner, any ten makes uh, a straight. Yep. And you check now after he had called on the turn. Uh, yep. He bets and you check raise all in. Yep. Uh, what hands do you expect him to call with, given this board and the prior action? And then what do you think he should call with? Yeah, so I think any straight is a tough spot. Um, I think it's obvious to him that I'm representing a flush, maybe king 10 um, for like the thinnest value hand I might have. But for sure, any straight is a bluff catcher. Um, I think he would bet weaker. I think he would bet two pair for value, but I don't think he would really consider calling with two pair. So my, my guess in, in game was that he was mulling over a 10, maybe king 10, and just recognized it was a gross spot. Um, I believe he should call with those hands sometimes uh, but only because everything kind of makes sense where he usually doesn't have a great hand uh, I can have all the great hands I can also bluff this way I've, I've got plenty of weak hands to bluff with um, it's, ju it's just a tough spot yeah. uh, so I read in the update that he was in the tank for like quite a long time like yeah. seven minutes maybe is what <laughs> yes he said. yeah um, at Correct me if I'm wrong, but you're more of an online player than live. Yeah. Do you have any advice to people who might be more familiar with playing online with dealing with a situation like that where someone <laughs> with quite a table presence is uh, staring you down and trying to you know, get live reads maybe or just assess the situation? You know, What did you do in yeah. that moment? Yeah, I mean, I, w I wish I had an airtight strategy there. I'm, I'm working on that as I go. Uh, I, I maybe even mentioned that to him earlier in the match because, like, to me, I mean, Ivy's incredible, right? He's He's been playing live for decades. He's been crushing the whole time. 
Uh, it's intimidating to have someone like that. You know he's observing everything. You know he's taking stock of all the things I've done in previous hands. And like the best I can do is try and be consistent. Um, I focus on breathing. Breathing keeps me calm. It's best to stay calm. But I, I also just try and like, like I have the nut or second nuts here. I could just lay back and, and take it easy because I know nothing bad can happen to me here. Um, but I try to stay the same as I, I do when I'm bluffing. Like I, I bluffed earlier in the match and I kind of want to do my best to, to appear the same way that I appeared then. Um, it's, it's hard not to think about that stuff, but, but breathing helps for sure. That's, that's just like a fundamental thing. Yeah. So Ivy did ultimately make the call and mucked without showing after seeing Rapichow's flush. He hit the rail just short of the money while Rabichow went on to earn 193k as a semi-finalist. Thanks to Kevin Rabichow for sharing his insight on this hand, and thank you for checking out this strategy video right here on cardplayer.com.